Okay, let me explain this setup uh, again. Uh, I've got a 555 timer circuit here with a 2N3055 uh, to basically um, pump a pulse into this sol solenoid arrangement. And um, the idea is to create a vortex in this cylinder, which is an, a, a magnetic flux, um, and then uh, sort of s try to study um, the uh, uh, tank circuit that is here, which is just a coil and a capacitor. Um, now this capacitor is unusual in the sense that it's surrounded by a cylinder that is metallic and magnetic. Um, so, um, and with the flux spinning around, uh, the question is what, what kind of frequency response would you get? Um, so I have a very crude way of measuring that. I have a um, a meter on the left here that will measure current in milliamps, AC current, and I'm measuring uh, just across the tank. So the meter itself will be shorting across the tank. Um, and the um, right meter is the frequency. So when I um, uh, turn this on, I, I, I uh, have this s uh, pulsing at around 2,800, uh, uh, 2,085 kilohertz. So this is in the audio range, and this is the current that the tank circuit is, um, or, or basically the current that can flow through the meter um, across the tank circuit. There's no antenna and ground hooked up. This is just um, directly across the tank circuit. And um, I've, met, uh, I've just crudely uh, dialed in various frequencies here and measured this current and, and attempted to plot that. Okay, and this is the uh, curve that I'm getting. Um, this uh, high point here is around 2 kilohertz. Uh, it's kind of hard to be precise exactly, but um, you'll notice that the, uh, the inductive part of the reactants is very, very steep. So the... Um, the coil is not behaving like a 130 uh, millihenry coil. It is behaving uh, 5,000 times uh, steeper than that. And that's because the cylinder with the rotating flux in it is altering the inductance quite dramatically. Um, then uh, the capacitance part of the reactance is very gradual falling off um, and I, I believe it's falling off because I've kind of a high I'm using just standard aluminum foil and I believe the resistance in that capacitor is too high if I had a capacitor that was um, better uh, made better this actually may flatten out more which is demonstrating a regenerative effect. The capacitor is uh, charging up and b behaving like a neg uh, uh, the negative resistance starts to come into play here. So th this creates a wide band uh, filter pulling in energy from many different frequencies if this can be flattened out. Um, so I guess at this point in terms of this data uh, it would be nice if there were some replicators what you'll need is a signal generator or a 555 timer, 2N3055 kind of circuit, something that can produce a pulse within the audio range. And it needs to be, uh, uh, you need a power resistor so that you can pulse a solenoid. And, and it, not just any solenoid, but um, actually two solenoids, uh, counterwound, one's clockwise, one's counterclockwise. The, uh, the uh, positive pulse coming in matters in terms of which one of these wires you put it on. You'll actually get different results uh, because it relates to the winding in this coil. This coil is, an, is a basket weave coil, a hand, uh, hand wound around these uh, 21 um, ba uh, bamboo uh, barbecue steaks. Just put on a piece of cardboard here. And um, there are 27, this is 5 inch diameter, 27 turns. So it's pretty easy to make. The hard, harder thing is the capacitor. Uh, I wrapped it around a sort of a smaller uh, paint can. This paint can is uh, four and a quarter inches in diameter. There's a handmade capacitor in here wrapped around it. The capacitance was too high. I'm shooting for 7.8 nanofarads, so I had to augment it with two 20 nanofarad capacitors in series. 
and uh, then dialing in uh, 7.8 nanofarads, I was able to hit that exactly. The reason why this capacitance needs to be kind of low is um, because you're um, you're basically trying to tune for this two two kilohertz uh, point, which uh, um, and actually uh, maybe even tuning lower uh, because. Uh, uh, there is uh, something called a BH curve in uh, when you create create a uh, coil around a magnetic material, and there's an elbow on that BH curve, and so the frequency re response of of this metal um, there's a place where it's flat and there's a place where an elbow occurs, and this is all. Um, science that people used to know, or electronics that people used to know when they were working on um, magnetic amplifiers, which were uh, in fashion in the mid-1900s, but kind of died away and no longer became popular uh, because of um, semiconductors and tubes. So that, uh, not, a, not a lot of people have dabbled with magnetic amplifiers, um, but maybe we should re-look at that. And um, if you think about the B the Bedini SSG, it is really a clever magnetic amplifier with a uh, with a combination uh, amplifier motor, uh, because you have sort of this regenerative oscillation happening. Um, so with a magnetic amplifier, you can create a degenerative effect or a regenerative effect depending on the uh, flux that you're creating uh, in the metal with a bias and it usually uh, it's a DC flux or a DC bias so you're um, you're controlling your gain and so forth by uh, inserting a spin in the metal that is that is always in the same direction so people would do that with a DC current and they would turn their AC current into DC using a bridge rectifier or a half wave rectifier. So that 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 is uh, you can look it up in older uh, basic electronics books in, in terms of uh, magnetic amplifiers. This arrangement creates the spin in one direction, uh, leaching off of this coil uh, and creating a, a vortexual wake. Um, and you can alter where that wake goes by moving this around. So. Um, the idea is you're you're sort of tuning this this wake so that it lands in your cylinder, and depending on uh, the alignment, it, uh, you'll hit the, that optimum point where everything's in here. Um, and it might be regenerative because part uh, particles, protons and electrons will will be sucked down into this vortex and interface with the capacitor. So the capacitor doesn't respond like a normal 7.8 nanofarad capacitor, it actually uh, pulls in energy. That's None of that's uh, um, proven yet, but I certainly am seeing a frequency response with this crude setup that looks promising and I'm encouraged. <laughs>